She kissed my lips. What's up, DIY Nation? Welcome back to You Floor, the channel bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. We are back out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and yes, we are back on the stair job. Now, the last time you guys were here, I was explaining to you some of these stairs had humps and some of these stairs had dips. So, in order to fix that, I had to cut them in half. Now, normally I would take them off, but they put a bunch of nails in these. So, if they were humpy or dippy, I cut them in the middle in place. But if they needed to have the nose cut off, I tore the front of them off. If they were flat, I didn't have to do that. I was able to just cut the nose off. I also have a tip for how to do that coming up next. And make sure you stick around to the end because we still have to box that step out down below. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so all the ones that we were supposed to cut in half, we cut in half. Now it comes time to cut the noses off, and I'm going to show you a little trick with a little tool that I have that it makes it a whole lot easier and a little bit more precise for cutting. one of these. You guys ever seen one of these? Okay, instead of just coming up and measuring everything, you can basically just come and slide this thing up here, and this thing is adjustable. So you just slide it over to it, lock it in, which, you know, tighten it up, and then just come over here like that and make your mark. Actually, I'm going to check and see. Yeah, that's right on. And I'm gonna mark right there and then I'll check it in the middle as well. It looks pretty good to me. I'm going with it. So that should put our tread flush with the riser here so I can bring the riser all the way up to the top. Sit that tread on top for a nice tight fit. Alright guys, so we got all the nose cut off the ones that are staying and we got them cut in half if they have to be cut for the purposes of cove or bowed. So I'm going to go set up the table saw right now try to get these things cut so I can get them in today. That way when I come back tomorrow, I got a fresh start and I can go ahead and start with my risers and cap them off with my treads. Alright guys, let's go get that thing rolled out. So I went to Home Depot and got some of that PL3X. You guys know what I'm talking about. That stuff is awesome. Plus it's highly recommended that you use a adhesive like that. Now you can see that I got all the noses cut off pretty flush here and even if it's flush here and it's not there it's cut exactly the same you know depth wise so when the riser comes up it's going to come all the way up to the top and then the tread is going to lay on top of that so it's not really even going to matter as long as I cut it consistent. I use one height so if it's like seven and an eight on one side and it's seven if you can like let's say it was seven on this side and it was seven and an eighth on this side if you go ahead and cut it seven and an eighth and I usually cut it on a little bit of a bevel you know what I'm saying so it doesn't just creates no cracks then where that little tiny gap might be you can either shim that or you can fill that up with the PL3X and that stuff will become a shim so uh, it'll, re it'll rest down on top of the riser and make it the same all the way across it looks beautiful right now I'm gonna go ahead and pound some of these nails down and close up some of these cracks that I created when I cut the boards in half and then I'm gonna go outside and rip off the noses for the rest of these that are missing come in and glue them and screw them and I think we're gonna call it a day I'm gonna take the uh, uh, we're gonna be doing the risers building them at home in our little workshop our yard and then uh, I'm gonna paint the risers Kelly's gonna finish staining those she's got exactly what she wanted as far as stain goes because she's been working her magic with trying to match the floor that's here uh, she's pretty good at doing that we've done quite a quite a few jobs where she matches the stain to the floor and people are pretty uh, pretty happy with the results we still got to make this uh, this little landing thing she wanted here it normally would just install flooring right there but she wanted 
it to look like one big giant piece of wood. So we, we got a bunch of uh, treads for that too. That actually then being one inch actually helped us out with this whole situation where we were actually able to make every single one of these steps seven and three quarters, including the carpet up to the top. All right, um, first thing I'm gonna do is come down here and build this out as we talked before and we had to build this thing up an inch and then we are going to add the inch right, the tread to that and that'll bring it up to here where we need it to be, which is gonna get about seven and three quarters once we put our new floor on. All right guys, so I got this thing set up so you can see exactly what's going on hold on first of all I took a tread and I stuck it on top of the landing there so it can be as it's going to be when we are doing what it is that we're doing all right when I come down to the green line to the top of my new flooring it is seven and three quarter so I want to be able to get seven and three quarter going here too and as you can see when I go out here to the front boom we are at seven and three quarters so I need to figure out what kind of first strip I need to put on top of this so that when I put my one inch on top of that, it ends up being at seven and three quarters. So if I go back here and see I have two, looks like on this side, two and three sixteenths. And over on this side, we have two and three sixteenths. So what that's telling me is that if I want that to be at seven and three quarters, I need to cut me a fur strip to fur this thing up right here, one inch and three sixteenths, so that when I put my final tread on, it's at seven and three quarters, and then seven and three quarters right there. And if I'm not mistaken, once we get these over here, imagine that being the floor over there. Right, once I put my two by 12 back on this, and it'll be flush just like this one is right here, then I'll be able to put my riser on. You'll be able to see, let's see if I can get you a good idea of what it's gonna be like. That's seven and three quarters right now, but I gotta get on top of my floor here. So you can see we're at six and three quarters, and once I put that inch on there, it'll be seven and three quarters. I don't know how that worked out, but it worked out. It took a lot of, <laughs> early in the morning, I had to make my brain work hard. I should've went and played one of those Google Play games before I did it. All right, guys, I'm gonna go down here and get this part of it ripped up and get that installed so that I can go ahead and finish ripping these flush putting them in, gluing them, screwing, and then we're calling it a day. I'll be back with you, holla. Alright, so I got this first block in right here. I mean, it's not in, but I got it. I had to do a little bit of chiseling and everything. But you can see I got the laser line. Right? I'm in the way. Anyway, the laser is right on the edge of that on the top and in the back back there, making that front six and three quarters. And if it was from the floor up in the back, six and three quarters. Then we add our inch, we seven and three quarters all day long. Money. Bet. The 2x4 that was nailed on the back was slightly lower, so I put shims on the end and glued them, then I ran a thick bead of PL3X on the top. Once I set it in place, I made sure to nail it on the ends, but instead of nailing down where it'll suck that piece down, I decided to nail straight through the face. That way it helps to hold it in. Once the PL3X dries, it'll all become one. What's up you guys, welcome back. It is day two and we are back out on the stair project. 
All this stuff is rock hard and solid, like we said the other day. Look at that PL3X. Man, that's like another board in there. It is hard as a rock. So I know that ain't going anywhere. I got a couple staples up here I need to remove before we start gluing and putting the risers on here. But I came in this morning and started inspecting this and started thinking, now how am I going to do this? Because remember what we talked about before, whenever you're doing projects like this where it's custom work and it's all trim and everything, you always want to make sure that it has a finished edge or at least looks like a finished edge. You don't ever want to put something in and somebody walk in and see like you just chop something off. That doesn't look good. If anything, put a return on it or something that makes it look like it's finished. And when I was inspecting this over here, I started realizing, hmm, that's going to look kind of weird. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do for this transition right here because my riser is not going to slip back all the way back there. You can see that my riser is not going to slip back all the way in there because my riser is about a half inch thick and that only looks, well, down at the bottom down there, it don't even look like I have a quarter of an inch. So it's better that I butt into this all the way up to here and then the, the, the tread that comes and sits up on top will cap that. My, my, then my problem will be this right here. So this is okay being finished right here the way it is because that's the way it was before. But this being a half inch drywall, if that riser that I'm putting in on this right here does not come out flush with that us and leaves a little bit of a gap, I may have to put some little eighth inch first strips on there just to bump it out so they come back in front of this, like I said, just to make sure that it looks finished when it's done. And also since we're sticking one inch up on top of this right here, we're going to have to get over here with our oscillating tool and cut this right here so that it slips up underneath that. You don't want to butt up against that and then try to wrap chew mold or cord around under it. It just looks a whole lot better when you slip up underneath it, something like that. And then of course it'll hit that riser over there and then we'll lay our new riser over top of that. And then we have a good clean transition all the way around. All right guys, so we're here. We're about to start the very first riser. And so I brought it in so that I could set it up against this build out right here. Kind of get an idea of how tall I actually need to get it. I'm gonna describe it on the back, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna cut it on the back because I'm gonna measure and I'm gonna go with the tallest number. The reason I'm gonna go with the tallest number is because if I go with the shortest number, I may have a gap up underneath my tread. Even if this part is higher than this side, say, or if it's higher on this side. I just wanna make sure I go with the tallest part so when I set the tread down, there's no gaps in between. Now what I'm gonna do over here, this shoe mold has to be cut. I'm probably gonna use an oscillating tool and a razor knife to take care of that. And then also over here, we gotta figure out how we're gonna do that. So I figured I'd just bring it in here and then scribe it. And I just go through the motions of what it is I do. You guys just hang tight, all right? Dang it. All right, so it looks like that's gonna be able to just slide right in there. I may just go ahead and cut a little bit off the top here so that gap is gone and then it's really tight and then we don't have to, you know, overpower it with some caulk. But that looks like a, remember when I was talking about making sure you get something finished off? That's what I'm talking about. All right, beautiful. All right, moving on. If you ever have to glue two miters together like this, I can't express how awesome tape is when it comes to clamping your wood together. It makes the perfect hinge clamp.
guys. That's looking nice. All right, so I don't want to put a whole lot of nails in there, but I do want to get it up nice and tight and nail it where it is supposed to be. I'm liking that. So shoe mold will be down here. So that's where I'll start with my nails. Back here, what's tight. No, we may not even push you mold. Goodness gracious. At least on the first step. I'm gonna put a couple here. And we can just spackle over those. The glue is gonna do the work, but that's it, man. That's the bottom riser. That's how you do it. And also, again, you see this little bit of crack here? That's okay, because we're gonna hit that with spackle, and then once you come back and sand that down and paint it, man, it looks like it just grew together. So, that's what we got. All right, guys, moving on to the next step. No pun intended. Or maybe there was. All right, guys, so I got the first tread set up here, as you can see. It's back flush up against that, and so with the overhang, we're looking at about an inch and an eighth overhang right here and for me that's plenty because if she decides in the future to go with some little cove molding the thing is only really about five eighths of an inch thick so we still be able to slide it up under there and still have a little bit of nose like half inch of nose left over so and that's how they're supposed to be when you're building steps like this but she doesn't want the cove and that's why we're bringing our risers up flush to the top so that our treads sit down on top of it with no gap so probably we'll have to caulk up underneath there just a little bit but for the most part it should be pretty tight that's the way we're going to build it all right so now i got to figure out with this being said, it's hanging over an inch and an eighth over here. So I need to make sure that it's hanging over an inch and an eighth over here. So what I need to do is just measure against my wall over there and then add an inch and an eighth to that measurement. So let me get this math figured out and I'm gonna get this thing dialed in and get it cut up. See if we can't get this thing installed today. Let's go. Well guys, unfortunately, the video of me installing this was corrupt. But hey, you've been with me long enough to know what happened. We squirted PL3X all around the perimeter, set the step in place, and drove nails through the top of it and puttied it with a matching putty. It turned out great. Hey, don't forget guys, we still got these whole steps to do. And I gotta fix that nose at the top, and I got a trick for that. A lot of you have been asking about that in the comments. So I'm gonna show you how I finished the top step on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications or you won't know when that video comes out. And hey, if you enjoyed today's presentation, smash that like button. See you guys on the next one. Until then, take care and stay safe. Peace.